Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Carol Pierce. I'm the director for Family and Community Services with the City of Albuquerque. And we're really excited that you're here and we're really excited that we've got so many of our partners together for a, a really robust conversation that we had this afternoon talking about the gaps to serve people in our community that are, that are unhoused, some of the solutions and what we can do to really work together and continue to strengthen our work together. We came, um, this gathering happened because we have Je Jeff Olivet, which we're really excited that he's here today. And he's the executive director of the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness. Came from Washington, D.C., but with Albuquerque roots. So we're really excited that he could be here today to really prompt such a great conversation. I think what the, some of the highlights for me are, we do this work together. The city, our county, our partners, our nonprofit organizations, the Coalition to End Homelessness, we all work together to serve people, to really lift the bar here in Albuquerque. And part of our conversation is always, what do we do to help close those gaps and how do we work together as a system? We've invited you here today in the heart of the Gibson Health Hub, where our Gateway Center is, and that's also really showing how it's a wraparound services and what can happen when everybody works together to really address the needs of our un unhoused partners. So with that, I'd like to welcome Jeff Olivet to the podium. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Jeff Olivet. I'm executive director of the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness. And my colleagues and I came to New Mexico this week to try to understand what's going on with homelessness in this city and across the state. Homelessness is a crisis. It is a life and death public health crisis here in New Mexico and in communities around the country. Uh, we have witnessed amazing work this week. There are some extraordinary outreach workers and healthcare providers, housing providers and case managers, people who have experienced homelessness themselves who are now peer outreach workers supporting others. And the work that's happening here is extraordinary. It is life-saving work that is helping people move out of the crisis of homelessness into the stability and connection of homes every single day. Uh, we believe that it is possible to end homelessness in Albuquerque, in Santa Fe, across this state, and across this nation. In December of 2022, the Biden-Harris administration released our strategic plan to prevent and end homelessness. It's called All In, and we're inviting mayors and other elected officials, nonprofits, business community, faith community, and other leaders in our communities to become part of the movement to end homelessness in the United States. The all-in strategy provides a roadmap for the nation and a roadmap for states and cities across this country to address homelessness effectively, efficiently, and compassionately. We know that to end homelessness in this community and around the state, we've got to prevent it before it happens. We've got to address the crisis of homelessness that's happening every day in our community, and we have to scale up the housing and supportive services that create permanent solutions to homelessness. In order to do that, we need everyone at this table. We need people who've experienced homelessness themselves to help be guides and decision makers along the way. We need elected officials, we need nonprofits, we need community members, the business community, the faith community. This is a problem that we can come together to solve. And we are so thrilled to be with this extraordinary group of partners today and this week. We believe that it is possible to solve homelessness. Thank you for being here and thank you to all of those behind me and across this great state who are working every day to address the life and death crisis of homelessness. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Monet Silva. Can you hear me? This one. This, one's this one. Talking to the wrong microphone. Uh, my name is Monet Silva, and I'm the executive director of the New Mexico Coalition in Homelessness. Um, and I just wanted to say um, one again thanks to the partners that showed up today. Um, the conversation that was had this afternoon was um, needed. It was um, heartfelt, and we know that we still have some work to do. Um, but we're everyone is ready to do the work from the nonprofits to the government. Um, 
and we know that if we all work together, we can get there. Um, one of the things that I specifically talked about was the coalition's focus on um, racial equity lens in, in homelessness and making sure that we are applying that um, in everything that we do within our coalition um, and everything that we do with our, our member organizations um, that are part of the coalition. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, Jeff and Tamara, um, for coming and visiting us in New Mexico. And that's it. Thanks. Katie. Is that good? So I'm Jenny Metzler. I'm the CEO of Albuquerque Healthcare for the Homeless. And I want to scale down a little bit and talk about a very real concrete example of this kind of partnership within a public health perspective on um, homelessness, which so many people in our community care about right now. It's a really good moment to come together to take advantage of what is happening at the federal level and really think locally here about what we can do in our community. Um, we know that people who experience homelessness have all kinds of health problems, whether precipitating their fall into homelessness or perpetuating homelessness. We know that um, we have some really good data on that right now. We know that people spin through institutions at a very high cost, whether it's the jail or our hospitals or other places. Um, we have data now that say nationally that if someone who doesn't have a home is in the hospital, their hospital stay will be 4.1 days longer than someone who is housed. The cost of that care will be $4,000 more per admission, not over the course of a year. That the readmission rate is two times higher, meaning they're going to come out of the hospital and then go back in. Emergency room visits are three times higher. And that the 30-day readmission to the ER is six times higher. So we have that data available and can share it with you. Uh, we at Albuquerque Healthcare for the Homeless are part of a national Healthcare for the Homeless Council that now has a Nash, um, National Institute for Medical Respite Care. We've discovered this model of medical respite that addresses the gap in the system for when people are either don't need to be in the hospital so we can avoid these costs and, and the detriment to their health that further perpetuates their poor health and risk of dying of mortality. Um, there's a model emerging that we've been a part of Hospitals are really eager to have a place to discharge people without a home, and we're all eager to have better outcomes for them. Most importantly, with an exit to housing, not so that they just crank through. So medical respite is its own kind of animal. We approached the city about six or seven years ago and said, let's form a work group. Let's do a very systematic, tested methodology for assessing how big is this problem. We talked to hospital stakeholders, people experiencing homelessness with health problems, the city, Albuquerque Heading Home, First Nations, Barrett Foundation, another shelter, Albuquerque Healthcare for the Homeless, got together with an independent public health consultant, and we determined that the need here is at least 50 people on any given day who don't need to be in the hospital, but don't have a home to go home to to recuperate or to prevent hospitalization. So we have developed a model over the years. Uh, what is very excited about that I can't emphasize enough is the collaboration, because we talk about it a lot. My entire career, decades, has been in the non-governmental organizational world. And we get asked all the time, what are we doing working with others? And this is a very good example for a high impact model. Um, the, the need in that assessment was done in 2017. Over those years, we've developed a model to respond with a lot of input and with national consultants and local input from people experiencing this. We now have the partners coming together. And this isn't because somebody funded this with a big <coughs> chunk of money to our federal partners. We didn't ask for that. What we did was we looked at how we could leverage dollars. So everyone in this partnership, which is very formal, are bringing their own dollars. First Nations, Albuquerque Healthcare for the Homeless, we're bringing our care every day to a space here at the Gibson Gateway that the city is providing and renovating and making beautiful design that is very trauma-informed for up to 50 beds um, slated to open now and be operational around May, this spring in 2024. The city, Albuquerque Healthcare for the Homeless, First Nations, and the University Hospital is very involved so we can look at continuity of care. Not that they're bringing money or funding it, but that we're talking about how can we engage people, make sure we're keeping an eye on them, create this space for them to recuperate, bring in specialty care. Any of us who go home to recuperate and have a home, whatever would come in. We also have Heading Home that will help us as, um, do the operations. So it's not a shelter, it's not housing, it's another kind of animal somewhere in between. The other thing that I want to say in addition to this collaboration that's very exciting is we have resources to do an independent evaluation. So we'll be accountable to the people who get this care, to all the partners, to all of you, to the community and the use of the resources. So we're very excited. We have a lot more information about that. But I think it's um, a very real high impact example of how everything we're talking about in this space 
is really going to make a difference. Thanks. Does anybody have any questions for our, our federal friends here or uh, anyone else who's was in attendance at the provider forum? Yeah, I'm wondering if, if someone can maybe talk a little bit more about what were some of the big topics of the conversation today? What were some of the strategies discussed? You know, I'm curious to hear a little bit more about how you guys are talking about approaching homelessness in Albuquerque. Monet, Jeff, I think. Okay, thank you for that question. Um, so some of the topics that we discussed today were um, gaps in our system um, in Albuquerque where where the partners are feeling that there's um, could be some help needed from whether it's other agencies, uh, the state, federal um, barriers to housing. Um, what we're finding are causing people to be on the streets longer, things that we could uh, possibly uh, address. Um, lack of housing units, um, wraparound services, etc. cetera. Um, we also um, had a really good conversation about um, homelessness in the Native American community and how that um, impacts us here in Albuquerque as well as the state. Um, we know that the data shows us that um, Native American homelessness is, is much higher than, um, than other people. And so, um, and some of the gateway is going to, uh, to deal with that as well. Uh, Jeff? And I'll just add a couple of other topics. Uh, we talked extensively about the barriers people face when they're trying to get back into housing. And we know that people exit homelessness every day, but it's through Herculean efforts uh, the, of their own and of the providers that are serving them. Our commitment to this group is that we're gonna take back what we heard uh, around those barriers back into our discussions in Washington, D.C. to figure out what the federal government can do to ease some of that, uh, some of the bureaucracy and some of the barriers that get in the way of helping people exit from homelessness. I would also just echo um, the, uh, the comment Monet made about tribal homelessness and the racial injustice of homelessness more broadly. We know that homelessness severely impacts communities of color, and the Biden-Harris administration is taking a very strong racial justice approach to addressing homelessness, as I know the community partners are here in Albuquerque as well. So, you know, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Partners here. Um, to also add, one of the things we talked about, and I really like how Tamara, one of our um, senior regional from the U.S. Agency Council on Homelessness said that one way to describe somebody unhoused is they're missing that social network that we each have. And I just really liked how you said that. Because if anyone in this room had trauma fall upon them tomorrow, we're going to reach out to that aunt, our parent, an uncle, a neighbor, the friends that are going to help us in hard times. And sometimes somebody who's unhoused, that social network has been broken for a variety of reasons because of trauma and other, other challenges. So one of the takeaways from that is there has historically been sometimes scattered housing. And I really appreciate how we talked about one of the changes that we need is people need to keep those social networks that they've developed sometimes on the street to have that social support. So we've got some of those things in motion that we're doing. That's what the city and what the partners are doing when we're converting housing to hotels, mixed income, et cetera. So we really need to think about that social network as we move from a scattered site model.